the MNCs are going to enable the host country to decrease the imports and to increase the exports. Sometimes by manipulating the price of the product, by transferring the goods from this branch to another branch, what they'll do? They're going to avoid the tax. They try to avoid the tax just by transferring the goods from one branch to another branch by manipulating the price of the product. If there is no competition in a particular country, then whatever the products are available in that particular country, we have to purchase those products at the determined price. Hello everyone, I'm Arun Kumar, lecturer in Department of Commerce and Management, Vidyashram First Grade College, the Temple of Excellence, Mysore. Dear students, welcome to this new session on unit number three, that is economic and global environment. So in the previous sessions, we discussed about what is economic environment and what is the importance of economic environment and also we discussed what are the factors which impact on economic environment and we also discussed about globalization. So what is globalizations, limitations of globalizations, advantages of globalizations and disadvantages of globalization. So in this particular session, dear students, we will be discussing about the concept called MNCs. It is all about multinational companies. So definition and meaning of MNCs, that is the definition and meaning of multinational companies. So according to an ILO report, the essential nature of the multinational enterprises lies in the fact that its managerial headquarters are located in one country referred to for convenience as the home country. So while the enterprise carries out operations in a number of other countries as well, it is called host country. Yes, the particular managerial activities will be done, the managerial activities or the management activities will be done in one country and the particular business entity will be having the different branches in different different countries. Those different countries are called host countries. So multinational company, it's all about it will be having a headquarter in one country, in home country and managing the business in different different host countries that is called multinational corporations or multinational companies. A corporation that controls production facilities in more than one country, such facilitates having been acquired through the process of foreign direct investment. Yes, it will be having the control on production facilities in more than one country that will facilitate by foreign direct investment. Through the help of the foreign direct investment, what they'll do, they try to expand their business in different, different countries by doing the production activities in different places and in different locations. So multinational company, it's all about the company is going to have headquarter in one country, in home country, and operating in different different host countries, those kind of companies are called multinational companies. Merits of multinational companies. Yes, what are the merits? What are the advantages of this multinational company? So the first advantage is MNCs helps increase the investment level and thereby the income and employment in the host country. So the MNCs are going to help in increase in investment level. So what they'll do? In home country, they'll be having their branch and they go and start their branch in another country. So there the investment will increase. If they're investing their money in other country, in some other host country, then obviously the income level of their country will also increase and it is going to create the employment opportunities for the localites of the host country. So MNC helps in increase the investment level and thereby the income and employment in host country. Next, Advantages, the transitional corporations have became vehicles for the transfer of technology, especially to the developing countries. Yes, these MNCs are became the vehicles for transfer of technology for the developing countries. So if any developed country is starting its branch in developing country, then obviously they will be bringing their technology, their advanced technology to a developing country to produce the products. So in that way, they are transferring the advanced technologies to the developing countries so that the developing countries will also get few uh, advanced technologies in their country. Next one, they also kindle a managerial revolution in the host countries through professional management and the employment of highly sophisticated management techniques. If any company is going to start their business in another country, in host country, there they'll be having a very sophisticated 
management system and the techniques. So in developing countries or in underdeveloped countries, they will not be knowing how to manage a business entity. If this particular company, if any company is going to start their branch in another country, so there they will be managing very systematically and sophisticatedly and they used to implement a new managerial techniques in that particular country so that the people of that country or the different other companies of that country, they'll get to know how to manage the business entity. Next, the MNCs enable the host countries to increase their exports and decrease their imports requirements. Yes, the MNCs are going to enable, the MNCs are going to enable the host country to decrease the imports and to increase the exports. So if I'm going to start a business as Indian uh, business entity or as an Indian businessman, what I'll do, I'll go and start my business in China. So there, if I go and start business in China, what China people will do? Instead of importing the products from India, they buy there itself. So import is stopped. And if they are producing excess products, they can export it to some other country. So that is how this MNCs are going to help the host countries in reducing the imports and increasing the exports. So moving on to know a few more advantages. They work to equalize the cost of factors of production around the world. Yes, they work to equalize the cost of factors of production around the world. Cost of production, what is that? Factors of cost of production, that is men, money, labor. Men, money, labor. So these are all the cost of production. So what they are trying to do, they are trying to equalize the cost of production all around the world. Next one, MNCs provide an efficient means of integrating national economies. Yes, they are providing the efficient means of integrating national economy. So if they helps to integrate the each country's economy, so that will lead to the development of the world economy. Next, the enormous resources of the multinational enterprises enable them to have very efficient research and development system. Thus, they make commandable contribution to inventions and innovations. If the multinational companies have different different branches in different different countries, then it enables them to do a very efficient research and development and they'll be having a very efficient research and development system with them. So that what they'll do, they try to innovate the new product with their advanced research and development technologies. Next one, MNCs also stimulate domestic enterprises because to support their own operations, the MNCs may encourage and assist domestic suppliers. Yes, sometimes these MNCs are going to help the domestic producers or the domestic suppliers so that they can increase their productional activities. Next, MNCs helps increase competition and break domestic monopoly. Yes. If there is no competition in a particular country, then whatever the products are available in that particular country, we have to purchase those products at the determined price. If we have more products, then need not to purchase the same product. We can go for other products which is available for reasonable price. So what MNC will do? MNC is going to increase the competition and it's going to break the domestic monopolies. So these are all the advantages of multinational companies. Next, disadvantages of multinational companies. So as Leonard Gomes points out, the multinational companies technology is designed for worldwide profit maximization, not the development needs of poor countries. In particular employment needs and relative factors, scarcities in these countries, yes. So multinational companies are not with the intention of providing the employment or you know usage of the resources. No, they are not with that intention. They are with the intention of profit maximization. So this is going to be the one of the disadvantages in multinational companies. So what Mr. Linard says, Mr. Linard says these multinational companies are not having the intention of expanding the business or you know developing the poor countries. Rather, they have the intention of maximizing their profit. Next, through their power and flexibility, MNCs can evade or undermine national economic autonomy and control. And their activities may be 
inimical to the national interest of particular country through their power and flexibility mnc companies can evade or undermine national economic autonomy so sometimes through their power they are going to affect the economy of a particular country so if they plan to do something negative on the economy yes easily they can you know impact negatively on a particular country's economy so that is also going to be the one of the disadvantage next mncs may destroy competition and acquire monopoly parts the mncs are going to destroy the competition and they are going to acquire monopoly parts see at the starting they'll give their products at a reasonable price what we will do we are going to purchase those products only then because of that the other companies will shut down so after one or two years only this company will be there and whatever the price is going to fix for the same price we are going to purchase the product so there we are going to be suffer a lot so this mncs may destroy the competition and acquire monopoly parts next mncs retard growth of employment in the home country yes sometimes it may affect the employment opportunities in the home country see instead of starting our business in other country if we start one more branch in our country itself then it may create more employment opportunity in the home country if you are going to start the business branch in host country it will create the opportunity to host country not to the home country next the transfer pricing enables mncs to avoid taxes by manipulating prices on intra company transactions so the transfer of pricing enables mncs to avoid taxes so sometimes by manipulating the price of the product by transferring the goods from this branch to another branch what they'll do they're going to avoid the tax they try to avoid the tax just by transferring the goods from one branch to another branch by manipulating the price of the product next the mncs have been criticized for their business strategies and practices in the host countries they undermine local culture and traditions change the consumption habits for their conspicuous consumption dump harmful products in the developing countries yes sometimes what they'll do they are going to harm the culture of the host country what they'll do they are going to harm the culture of the host country and also they are going to dump the harmful product they are going to dump the harmful products in the developing countries so if few products are harmful then what they'll do they dump those kind of harmful you know products to the developing countries so that the developing country is going to be in trouble in future and it may not possible to them to develop in future so these are all the disadvantages of multinational companies next reasons for growth of multinational companies so the first reason is global expansion of a major product with worldwide market such as coca cola yes global expansion of a major product with worldwide market so for example coca cola so what they did instead of selling it in the same home country they started selling it to the whole other countries they are starting selling the product to the other countries to the host countries so that they expanded their business globally so expansion of business globally is the main intention of going multinational next one take over of foreign competitors firms such as bmw yes sometimes to take over the foreign competitors or to foreign companies we have to go multinationally next merger with foreign firms into one large international company such as glaxo smith klein yes sometimes uh, two companies are going to merge together and they build a new company right sometimes the new two companies are going to merge together and they build a big new company so with that intention also it is very much important to go multinational next vertical integration it's nothing but acquiring the companies that sell you materials and components and or that you sell on to for manufacture assembly or sales so vertical integration is nothing but sometimes we are going to purchase whatever required from other companies to manufacture a final product we are going to purchase the required product so what we will do we are going to have an understanding with, with those kind of business entities that is called vertical integration next horizontal integration that is acquiring the companies that makes similar components that along with yours will go into the final product yes horizontal integration is nothing but acquiring the companies that make similar products if any other company is producing the similar products what we will do we try to acquire that company so that we are going to be the leader in the market next diversification so using the profit from one major company to purchase companies dealing with different products in order to 
spread risk from loss of sale or financial fluctuation. So diversification is all about just like a distraction or distracting the companies. The last one is profit maximization. Yes, to earn the profit, yes, obviously we have to go multinationally. So these are all the reasons for growth of multinational companies in India. So with this, I end up this session for more videos. Keep watching. Until then, thank you all.